study the Bible in one year. Good morning. My name is Janice. I have missed you guys. It's been a few days, but we're going to get back into it. Try to get back into it every day. Please be sure to subscribe if you have not to study the Bible in one year. Yeah, we actually studied through the Bible. So uh, today, for example, is March the 10th, though we are on November 11th lesson because I took a break and had a goal on my other channel. I'm almost at 10,000 subscribers on my other channel. Uh, if you search for March 10th lesson, there is already a March 10th lesson. So every day you can actually go on um, my channel, Stuff the Bible, this channel, <laughs> in the search uh, bar and search for today's date, the date that you want to listen to the lesson and the lesson will be there. Isn't that wonderful? I love it. I love it. I love it. We are in Ezekiel 23, Ezekiel chapter 23, excuse me. And we are still in the book of Hebrews. We're beginning with the New Testament reading. Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercies. And thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you've given. Who and what you are, your peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Lord. Okay, Hebrews 10, beginning at verse 18. Again, we are on November 11th lesson for today, okay? November 11, Hebrews 10, 18. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. So in here, in the book of Hebrews, at the writer where we are thinking this apostle Paul is comparing uh, the new covenant with the old covenant. And comparing the blood of bullocks and calves and sheaves with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's telling us that once Jesus paid his sins for all, uh, his blood for all, he didn't have to go back into the temple year after year like they did in the Old Testament to offer up a blood uh, sacrifice to atone for our sins. No, no, no. Jesus atoned for our sins once and for all. Verse 19, and so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven, most holy place, because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-given way through the curtain uh, into the most holy place. So when Jesus died, if you read in the book, one of the gospels, when he died at 3 p.m. on that day, I don't believe he was crucified on a Friday, but it doesn't matter. The veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom. Why? Because now we can go do what? We can come boldly to the throne of God. Okay. Uh, verse 21 of Hebrews chapter 10. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere uh, hearts fully trusting in him for our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can trust, be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to in acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as so many people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning, that's the thing, right? Deliberately, because we all fall. If you continue to deliberately sin in, after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses, okay? And so I say in the, in the words of mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be confirmed. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Verse 29 of Hebrews chapter 10, just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained 
the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us, for we know the one who saved. He also said the Lord will judge his own people. Verse 31 of Hebrews chapter 10. It is a terrible thing to fall in the hands of the living God, right? So if you're in your sin, you're walking in sin, living in sin, and then the Lord returns. Verse 32 of Hebrews chapter 10. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remain faithful even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same. Uh, you suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when all you owned was taken away from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you, that will last longer so do not throw away this confident trust in the lord remember the great reward it brings you patience patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do god's will you will receive all that he has promised for in just a little while verse 37 the coming one will come and not delay and my righteous ones will live by faith, but I will take pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Okay? So we all going to live together forever, okay? But will your soul be saved? What is your soul? Your will, your intellect, your emotions. Flip on over to Ezekiel 23. We're almost done with the book of Ezekiel. Uh -huh. Ezekiel 23. We're almost done. Uh, this message came from the Lord. Verse 1. Son of man, once there were two sisters who were daughters of the same mother. They became prostitutes in Egypt. Even as young girls, they allowed men to fondle their breasts. The older girl was named Ohala. And her sister was Ohalaba. I married them, and they bore me sons and daughters. I am speaking of Samaria and Jerusalem, for Ohala is Samaria, and Olaba, Ohalaba is Jerusalem. Then Ohala lusted after other lovers instead of me, and she gave her love to the Assyrian officers. They were all attractive young men, captains and commanders, dressed in handsome blue, charioteers driving their horses. And so she prostituted herself with the most desirable man of Assyria, worshipped their idols and defiling herself. For when she left Egypt, she did not leave her spirit of prostitution behind. She was still as loud as in her youth when the Egyptians slept with her fondled her breasts, and used her as a prostitute. Verse 9, Ezekiel chapter 23. And so I handed her over to the, her Assyrian lovers, whom she desired so much. They stripped her, took away her children as their slaves, and then killed her. After she received her punishment, her reputation was known to every woman in the land. Yet even though Ohalaba saw what had happened to Ohala, her sister, she followed right in her footsteps. And she was even more depraved, abandoning herself to her lust and prostitution. She fawned over all the Assyrian officers, those captains and commanders in handsome uniforms, those charioteers driving their horses, all of them attractive young men. I saw the way she was going, defiling herself, just like her older sister. Then she carried her prostitution even further. She fell in love with pictures that were painted on the wall, pictures of Babylonian military officers outfitted in striking red uniforms, handsome belts and rich their waist and flowing turbans crowned their heads. They were dressed like chariot officers from the land of Babylonia. When she saw these paintings, she longed to give herself to them so she sent messengers to Babylonia to invite them to come to her. 
So they came and committed adultery with her, defiling her in the bed of love. After being defiled, however, she rejected them in disgust. In the same way, I came disgusted with Ohalaba and rejected her just as I had rejected her sister because she flaunted herself before them and gave herself to satisfy their lust. Yet she turned to even greater prostitution, remembering her youth when she was prostituted in Egypt. She lusted after lovers and genitals as large as a donkey's and a mission like a horse, like <laughs> like those of a horse, Jesus. And so Olaha, Ohalaba, you relied your former days as young girls in Egypt when you first allowed your breasts to be fondled. Mm, mm, mm. Therefore, Ohalaba, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will send your lovers against you from every direction. The Those very nations from which you turned away in disgust for the Babylonians will come with all the Chaldeans from Pekua and Shua and Kua and all the Assyrians will come with them. Handsome young captains, commanders, char chariot officers, and other high-ranking officers all riding their horses. They will come against you from the north with chariots wagons and a great army prepared for attack they will take up positions on every side surrounding you with men armed with shields and helmets and I will hand you over to them for punishment so they can do with you as they please I will turn my jealous anger against you and they will deal harshly with you they will cut off your nose and ears and any survivors will then be slaughtered by the sword. Your children will be taken away as captives, and everything that is left will be burned. They will strip you of your beautiful chair, clothes and jewels. In this way, I will put a stop to the loudness and prostitution you brought from Egypt. You will never again cast longing eyes on those things or fondly remember your time in Egypt. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will surely hand you over to your enemies, to those you loathe, those you rejected. They will treat you with hatred and rob you of all you own, leaving you stark naked. The shame of your prostitution will be exposed to all the world. You brought all this on yourself by prostituting yourself to other nations, defiling yourself with all their idols because you have followed in your sister's footsteps i will force you to drink the same cup of terror she drank verse 32 Ezekiel chapter 23 yes this is what the sovereign lord says you will drink your sister's cup of terror a cup that is large and deep it is filled to the brim with scorn and derision drunkenness and anguish will fill you for your cup is filled to the brim with distress and desolation, the same cup your sister Samaria drank. You will drain drain that cup of terror to the very bottom, then you will smash it to pieces and beat your breasts in anguish. I, the sovereign Lord, has spoken. Lord, have mercy. This is what happened when we walk away from God. Verse 35. And because you have forgotten me and turn your back on me, this is what the Lord says. The sovereign Lord says you must bear the consequences of your lewdness. I will say loudness, lewdness and prostitution. The Lord said to me, son of man, you must accuse Ohala and Olaba of all their detestable sins. Mm. They have committed both adultery and murder. Adultery by worshiping idols and murder by burning as sacrifices of children they bore to me. Furthermore, they have defiled my temple and violated my Sabbath day on the very day that they sacrificed their children to their idols. They boldly came into my temple to worship. They came in and defiled my house. You sisters sent messages to distant lands to get men. Then when they arrived, you bathed yourself, printed, painted your eyelids, and put your finest jewels for them. You set, set them on a beautiful embroidered couch and put my incense and my special oil on a table that was spared 
for you. From your room came the sound of many men carousing. They were lustful men and drunkards. From the wilderness who put bracelets on your wrists and beautiful crowns on your heads. Then I said, if they really want to have sex with old, worn out prostitutes like these, let them. And that is what they did. They had sex with Ohala and Ola Ohalaba, these shameless prostitutes. But righteous people will judge these sisters for what they really are, adulterers and murderers, verse 46. Now this is what the sovereign Lord says, bring up an army against them and hand them over to be terrorized and plundered for their enemies will be stoned and uh, kill them with swords they will butcher their sons and daughters in the land and my judgment will be warning to all women not to allow your wicked example you will be fully repaid for all your prostitution your worship of idols yes you will suffer the law the full penalty then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. Have mercy, Jesus. Flip on over to Psalm 109. Psalm 109, O God, whom I praise, don't stand silent alone while the wicked slander me and tell lies about me. They surround me with hateful words and fight against me for no reason. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations. E E something happened to the TV again. He's yelling to his dad in the bathroom. They surround me with lustful words and fight against me for no reasons. I love them, but they try to destroy me with accusations. Even as I am praying for them, they repay evil for good and hatred for my love. They say, get an evil person to turn against him. Send an accuser to bring him to trial. When his case comes up for judgment for him, he pronounced guilty, be pronounced guilty, count his prayers as sins. Jesus, count his prayers as sin, let his years be few, let someone else take his position, may his children become fatherless and his wife a widow, may his children wander as beggars, and may his children wander as beggars and be driven from their ruined homes, may creditors seize his entire state, and strangers take all he has earned. Let no one be kind to him. Let no one pity his fatherless children. May all his offsprings die. May his family name be blotted out in the next generation. May the Lord never forget the sins of his fathers. May his mother's sins never be erased from the record. May the Lord always remember these sins. And may his name disappear from human memory. For he refused all kindness to others. He persecuted the poor and needy, and he hounded the brokenhearted to death. He loved to curse others. Now you curse him. He never blessed others. Now don't bless you, bless him. Now don't you bless him. Cursing is as natural to him as clothes, clothing, or the water he drinks, or the rich food he eats. Now may his curses return and cling to him like clothing. May they be tied around. Uh, him like a belt. May those curses become the Lord's punishment for the accuser who will speak evil of me, but deal well with me, O sovereign Lord, for the sake of your own reputation. Rescue me because you are faithful and good, for I am poor and needy, and my heart is full of pain. I am fading like a shadow at dusk. I am brushed off like a locust. My knees are weak from fasting, and I am skin and bones. I am a joke to people everywhere. When they see me, they shake their heads in scorn. Help me, O Lord, my God, save me because of your unfailing love. Let them see that this is your doing, uh, that you yourself have done it, Lord. Then let them curse me if they like. But you will bless me. Uh, when they attack me, they will be disgraced. But I, your servant, will go right on rejoicing. May my accuser be clothed with disgrace. May their humiliation cover them like a cloak. But I will give repeated thanks to the Lord, praising him to everyone. For he stands beside the needy, ready to save them from those who condemn them. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 27, 13. Proverbs 27, 13. Get security. 
from someone who guarantees a stranger's debt get a deposit if he does it for foreigners. That's our study for today. That's our reading for today. Thank you for reading with me. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs us up. Remember, uh, even though we are on November 11, all the other lessons are already done. Love you. Have a blessed day. Let me know your thoughts. See you soon. Bye.